I've recently been watching animatronic videos on YouTube. There are lots of great mechanical assemblies for heads, hands and other types of creatures, built with 3D printing and other techniques. If you've ever built a project using RC style servos in Arduino, you know that it's really very easy to move servos around using the Arduino servo library. But you'll find that the servos start suddenly, move to their new positions as quick as the motor will go, and then stop suddenly again. This can be quite noticeable and it can make the project look less organic than it could. So today I'm going to show you how to make servos or other actuators move much more smoothly using only two simple extra lines of Arduino code. Thanks to 3D Fuel for the filament for this project and lots of other projects, so check out my channel for more 3D printing projects and check out 3dfuel.com. I decided it would be more interesting to show you how this works if we had an animatronic device to actually demonstrate it on, so I'm putting together a relatively simple thing with two eyeballs and some other axes that move. So we've got a pivot for each eyeball and you'll see I've left slots in the top there so we can get the screwdriver in for various things. There's another lever that's going to drive each one of those pushed by a servo. It only needs to be pretty simple, so the eyeballs only look left to right, there's no up and down motion, although we'll look at that later in the neck. You really don't need expensive hardware to make the motion of your animatronic project smooth, so I'm using some really cheap 9 gram servos, which are branded with some random name, and I got these off Amazon. These all fit into 3D printed brackets, and we're going to have one of those to move the eye on each side. All of the pivot points are just screws straight into the plastic, I've used some of the smaller screws that came for mounting the servos as well. So here we can see one of the servos mounted on its 3D printed bracket, and that's going to move the eyeball side to side quite convincingly. I thought it would be a nice feature to have a pair of eyelids on each eye that just gives it a bit more character, and I've designed the top and bottom lids to fit together and hinge around the same pivot point. And again these are just attached with a single self tapping screw straight into the plastic and into that single pivot point on both eyelids. Again I've added another cheapo servo that's going to push both of those lids closed and there'll be one of those on each eye. So I made some 3D printed levers with a slight crank in and that just means it can reach over the bracket that's holding the pivot point of the eyelids so that the servo can push and pull both of them at the same time without any obstructions and that seems to work pretty well. I have of course been making two of these, and these are mirrored pairs. Both of them are attached to a single bracket with a pivot point in, and that means they're both fixed together just like they would be in a creature's skull. There are several pieces that make up the neck mechanism, there's this intermediate piece that has two servos on, and it also has a pivot. All of this is 3D printed, and all of it's running just on the thread, this particular piece is on an M6 bolt. This is attached to the first section that has the eyeballs mounted on so that we can move around in two axes. And that will of course be controlled by the two servos with two levers pushing the upper stage and the combination of the position of those two servos will move the two axes. That whole piece has a piece of M8 studding screwed into the bottom and that fits into some bearings mounted in the actual base. There's a washer here acting like a little spacer just to shift that top part up so it can run freely on the bearings and that gives us the side to side motion. And that's controlled by a third servo with a lever, and these are just pretty cheap servos as well that I got off Amazon. I built a breakout board so I can plug all of the servos in and distribute power and ground to them. I just built this on Core Components Perma Proto board so that I can break out all of the wires. And all of those are of course attached to digital pins on an Arduino Uno, which is all you really need. I'm powering the servos from a 2 amp adjustable regulator turned down to 5 volts and any old battery I had lying around. And that should be plenty of current for this type of project. To start with, I'm going to use a switch to control this, which just switches on and off. I've made some really simple Arduino code that reads that switch into a variable. It reads it in and then multiplies it by 100, so we get quite a big number, and then I'm typing it out to the serial terminal so that we can see it. And I'm running this every 10 milliseconds so that it runs 100 times a second. 
So if we open a serial plotter and have a look at the switch, we should be able to see that we get a square wave as I switch it between 0 and 100. And we can see that's quite sharp. So if we were to use that to move a servo, then it would move as fast as it can to its position and then stop abruptly. But what we really want to do is not let that number change too quickly so we get a smoother motion. So I've created two new variables, one called switch smoothed and one called switch previous. And all of the code is in here, which is just two lines. So what we're doing here is taking only 5% of the new value that we're reading from the switch and multiplying by 100 and 95% of the previous value. We then create the previous value by bookmarking it here so it's the same as the new smooth value we've created. I'm then typing those out to the serial terminal so we can see both the original value and the new smoothed value. So now in our serial plotter we can see the same original blue square wave and the new data which is the red line. And we can see that this slowly decelerates as it gets towards its target. And that's because the number can't change that quickly because it's largely using the last value and only a small fraction of the new value on each cycle of the loop. But before we see how that goes it's time for a quick ad from the video's sponsor which is JLC PCB. JLC PCB are at the forefront of the PCB manufacturing industry and they provide high quality low price PCBs. It's easy to order from JLC PCB, just select your shipping destination and click on quote now and upload a Gerber file. The JLC PCB website will show a preview of the board and then you can select various options for manufacturing. Save it to your cart and enter your shipping information. JLC PCB currently have an offer where you can get 5 1 to 4 layer PCBs for just $2 with free SMT assembly. JLC PCB ship worldwide and they have fast build times so you can get your PCBs in as little as 3 to 5 business days. The ordering process is very easy at JLC PCB, so use the link in the description to this video to check it out now. So still just using the switch to get my data input, I've now mapped the data output to one of the servos. I've actually turned up the ratio so we're now using 97% of the previous value and 3% of the new value and that makes it even smoother and you can adjust the ratio as much as you like. But you can clearly see that that servo is decelerating as it gets to its target and that means we get a really smooth organic motion. I thought I should just mix in the eyeballs as well so I'm still using the switch and you can see my two waveforms so that my eyes also decelerate as they move in each direction. So I'm pretty happy with that so far. But I thought we should breathe some life into it so I got a pair of joysticks that are mounted in a box from an old project and these each have three axes as the tops turn as well. So that's wired into six analog ins on the Arduino Uno although I'm actually only using five of them. I've applied the smoothing to those values and now you can see no matter how fast I move the stick we always get that deceleration in the animatronic. And that makes a really organic motion that I'm really happy with. My left hand stick is controlling the three neck axes and my right hand stick is controlling the eyeballs and the eyelids. Obviously I've got one axis spare if I actually could move the eyeballs up and down but for now I think that demonstrates the concept pretty well. Of course we still get a sharp motion when we start the movement and that's pretty normal because most creatures and people will actually move fast to start with and decelerate as they get to the target. So that actually makes it quite realistic and quite lifelike. And if I suddenly let go of the sticks, you can really see the motion smoothing on all those servos. If we want to run our animatronic or prop on a fixed sequence of motions, we can still do that, but we must keep the loop running all the time so that we keep that smoothing over each iteration of the loop. And that means we can't really use delays which would block the code. I've based my code on the Adafruit Learning Center multitasking Arduino tutorial. So yep, let's ditch that delay. And the idea here is to use the system clock so we can check the time, see how much time is elapsed and trigger events without using delay which would block the code. For us that means seeing if a certain amount of time has elapsed, 
incrementing a flag to the next value and resetting the clock to the current time. Then the next time round the loop we can see if the flag is at the right value and another set of time has elapsed and then we can increment the flag again and reset the clock again to the current time. And in each step of the sequence I'm setting my pot values to whatever positions I want instead of moving the analog pots on the controller. And after this I've got the same filtering and smoothing code applied. So the result of this is that the loop keeps running round and round at 100 or 200 hertz or whatever we set it to, but because the loop's running the smoothing still works on each iteration of the loop, decelerating those values. Each time the loop runs it checks for that step flag to be at the right value and for the time to have elapsed and doesn't do anything else otherwise. And multitasking means of course we could run multiple step sequences at the same time because our loop's always running really fast and it's only kicking off the steps if the time has elapsed and the flag is at the right value so we could have several sets of things running on one Arduino and that would all be fine. It's particularly important though because the motion smoothing relies on that loop to keep running so that it can keep iterating on each loop with the previous value and the new value and chopping them up to give that deceleration even though there's no new inputs. So I think that's been quite interesting. If there's any more little tutorials you'd like to see about how to do something with an Arduino or something else, then let me know in the comments. I'm going to publish all the CAD and code for this if you'd like to have a look at it. So check that out in the link in the description below. It's on GitHub. And if you'd like to support me through Patreon or YouTube channel membership, those links are below as well. And patrons and YouTube channel members can get access to all the videos up to a week early, as well as sneak peeks and pictures of what's coming up to be part of that discussion. All right, that's all for now.